Okay, so I know I forgot to load the video last week. Um, I did the lesson and then uh, we did our prayer and then I forgot I was supposed to show you a game we were gonna play. So I'm gonna get that video loaded for you, but the game we were gonna play for last week was to take two towels, one towel for this team and one towel for the other team, and you hold on to the towel like on the corners or sides, so maybe get mom and dad or grandma over here and you be on the other side and you put a ball and you try to toss the ball back and forth between the towels and it's supposed to represent how just like Joseph last week forgave his brothers, we need to pass forgiveness back and forth to people. Okay, so that goes on to last week's video, but uh, we're moving on from Joseph now and we get to see um, a new character in our stories of the Bible. So let's get started by watching our video. Oh, and by the way, it's super quiet in here because today when I tried to push record, I actually pushed stop and I didn't push record at the right time. So those of you at home, you're gonna need to hear the lesson really quiet today. Years after Joseph brought his family to Egypt, Joseph died. His family stayed in Egypt. The people in the family were known as Israelites because they came from the family of Israel. They were also known as Hebrews. A new Pharaoh came to power and he was afraid of the Hebrews. The family was so big. What if they joined Egypt's enemies and fought the king? Pharaoh tried to make the Israelites weak. He made them slaves and gave them very hard work to do, but the families kept growing. Kill all the baby boys, Pharaoh said, but the Hebrew midwives who helped with the births did not do what Pharaoh said. Throw every Hebrew baby boy into the Nile River, Pharaoh commanded. Around this time, a Hebrew woman gave birth to a son. She hid him as long as she could. And then she put him in a basket and set it along the banks of the Nile. The baby's older sister, Miriam, stayed nearby and watched the basket. Soon, Pharaoh's daughter went to the river to take a bath. She found the basket and saw the baby cry. Pharaoh's daughter felt sorry for the baby. Miriam offered to find a woman to nurse the baby until he was older. The princess agreed. So Miriam brought her mother to care for him. The princess named the baby Moses. When Moses grew up, he left Egypt and worked as a shepherd. The Israelites in Egypt were still miserable and they cried out to God. God heard them. And he planned to send Moses to help them. One day, Moses saw a burning bush that was not burning up. Suddenly, God called from the bush, Moses, Moses. Moses replied, here I am. God said, I have seen how my people are suffering. I want you to lead them out of Egypt to a good land that I have for them. Moses wondered if the Israelites even remembered God. What if they ask for your name? What should I tell them? I am who I am. God said, tell them, I am has sent me to you. But if they don't believe me, Moses asked. So God gave Moses three miraculous signs to prove that God had appeared to him. Moses' staff turned into a snake. His hand became diseased and then healed. If they still do not believe, God said, pour on the ground water from the Nile River. It will turn into blood. Moses made excuses and said, please send someone else. Now God was angry, but he agreed to send Moses' brother Aaron with him. God saved Moses to rescue his people. The calling of Moses points to a greater calling and rescue. 
call of Jesus to come to earth to save God's people from sin. Moses and Jesus both obeyed God's commands in order to carry out his plan of salvation. Moses delivered God's people from physical captivity. Jesus delivered God's people from captivity to sin. Okay, so, like I said, it's kind of quiet in here tonight, um, but I'm glad to get to do this lesson with just you. Um, I miss you guys. Thank you for those of you who sent me Christmas cards, like Kenzie and Savannah. So sweet. Um, and Eliza and Skylar sent me a card. Um, I miss you guys. I can't wait to get to see you again. I know you've all grown so much. All right, so let's get started with Moses. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. So remember Joseph had gone to Egypt because they sold him there as a slave and he ended up helping his family get food. And then he moved all his family to Egypt so that they would have a good place to live and have food. Well, that is working out great for a while, but after that Pharaoh died and a new Pharaoh came, that Pharaoh didn't know Joseph and when he looked out on those Hebrew people, he realized there are a lot of them. They are multiplying. Like they keep having more and more and more kids. I've got to do something about them or they're going to take over and try to be the king over me. So he turned them into his slaves and he made them work so, so hard. So at this point in our story, Jochebed is a woman and she is a slave, her family is slaves, and she gets pregnant. Well, the Pharaoh realized that, that you know, making them slaves still, they were still having lots of babies. So he told the midwives, I want you to kill all the baby boys when they're born. If you go to a house and you deliver and it's a girl, eh, okay, just leave her. But if it's a boy, I want you to kill him. Well, of course the midwives, like, they deliver babies, so of course they love babies. They're like, oh, it's a baby. They couldn't kill any babies. So when the Pharaoh brought them in and he said, hey, we, we still got all these babies being born. What's happening? The midwife said to him, you know what? These Hebrew women are so strong. By the time we get to their house, they've already had the baby. So we can't kill the baby when it's already born, you know. So anyways, uh, Pharaoh has a new plan. And the new plan is, he tells all his soldiers, if you see a Hebrew boy under the age of two, throw him in the river. So all these Hebrew baby boys are getting killed and killed. And it is sad. Like the, it, the Hebrew people are so sad because they all care about each other and they're losing their children. But this one woman, Jochebed, she gets pregnant. And when her baby is born and she and her husband realize it's a boy. They decide to hide this baby. And they hide him for three months. Now, when a baby is born, they kind of cry like a little cry. But as they get older and older, their cry gets louder and louder. Like, and it's hard to hide a baby. You know, when they get hungry, when they get a poopy diaper, or when they just want to be held, like they get too hard to hide. So Jochebed comes up with a plan and her plan is to make a basket. Now my basket has some holes in it. It's not really the greatest basket, but like I told them earlier today, you guys have baskets laying around your house probably. You might have a basket with blankets in it or toys in it, or you might have one that, um, you know, you just use for decorations in your house. You can go to Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Dollar Tree, and buy some baskets today. Jochebed, she couldn't do that. They didn't have baskets, and especially a basket big enough for her baby boy. So she had to make a basket. So she wove this together super tight with no cracks in it. And then she put tar inside of it or pitch to make it like waterproof to seal up all the cracks so no water would get in the basket. Now, Shailene asked me earlier this morning, how could the baby breathe if she didn't give any cracks? Well, she made a lid to go over the top and that lid would have also had tar or pitch on it, but it also would have been able 
to open and close. And so that crack of the opening would have been just a little bit of a crack to just let a little bit of air in so that he could breathe. Hold on. Okay, so. So she makes this basket and she puts it in the river. Now, this is not a little creek. This is not a calm river. This is the Nile River where there's crocodiles and a lot of dangerous things. And the water is rushing, okay? It's a dangerous place to put anything, especially a baby in a basket. But Jochebed prays, oh dear God, please save my baby. Please save my baby. And God has a great big plan, okay? God makes it that at just the right time that she puts that basket in the river, that the water goes at just the right time and speed to make that basket be right at the palace when the princess is taking a bath. So here she is, she's taking a bath, and she hears a little cry, and she sees this basket, and she's very curious. So she gets her servants, go get that basket, go get that basket. So they bring the basket to her and she opens it and sure enough, she says, this is a Hebrew baby. Now she knows what her father, the Pharaoh has said, that all the baby boys that are Hebrew boys have to die. She knows that. She, she knows that she could get in trouble. She knows all this, but she also is a girl. And she looks at this baby and she says, oh, he's so cute. I don't want to raise this. I want this baby to be my baby. So, here comes Miriam, the sister, okay? And she's like, oh, ma'am, ma'am, would you like me to find a nurse to feed your baby? Because, see, back in that day, um, women couldn't go to Walmart or Brookshire's and buy baby formula to feed your baby. You had to feed your baby like a cow feeds a baby or a goat feeds a baby and you would nurse this baby. And so Miriam is like, would you like me to find a nurse for the baby? And the princess is like, yes, please. And so Miriam runs home and says, mama, mama, you're not gonna believe what happened. And she tells her the story and then she says, and the princess wants somebody to nurse him. So her mama comes to the palace, they make an agreement and she says, yes, I will go nurse this baby boy. And the princess says, thank you. And by the way, his name is Moses, which means I have drawn him up out of the water. So Jochebed gets to take her baby home and she gets to feed him and take care of him and love him and teach him about God for about five years is usually when they stopped feeding him. They weaned them from mama's milk. And so he then went back to the palace. Now, he grows up in the palace with Pharaoh and the princess and all these other princes. He grows up in uh, this wealthy palace. He has all the best toys, all the best clothes, all the best stuff. He has the best education. He is like a prince, okay? But he starts to realize that his skin is a little bit different than the Egyptian skin. He starts to realize when he looks out the windows and he walks around the town that he looks a lot like the Hebrew people. And he starts to figure out that he is a Hebrew. And he starts to watch how they're treated and he starts to get a little angry. And sure enough, one day he sees an Egyptian whipping one of the slaves because he's an overseer and Moses had had enough. He takes that whip and he goes and he kills that Egyptian and he thinks, it's no big deal. Nobody saw. Well, the next day he comes out and he says something to an Egyptian and they said, what are you going to do? Are you going to kill us too? And then he's like, oh no, everybody knows. So he runs, he runs and runs and runs and runs and runs away from the palace, from all this wealth he had. And he runs to a little bitty town far, far away in Midian. And he marries a girl, has some kids. He works for his father-in-law as a shepherd. A lowly, lowly job that nobody wanted. He's a shepherd. And one day when he's out in that field, he sees a bush. Now, I was telling the kids earlier, and do not ever do this at home, but if you went outside 
and you lit one of your bushes on fire, you would probably light one bush on fire and then would catch another bush and another bush and probably a tree and your whole house would probably burn down. Don't ever burn a bush. You know why? Because you're a human and we can't control fire, but God, God made this bush be on fire, but it wasn't burning up, okay? Now, I, my oldest, one of my older boys, Ethan, was trying to light a piece of paper the other day and he was holding it and then he tried to blow it out and it wouldn't blow out. So then he took it out the back door and he's like trying to stomp on it with no shoes on. He has socks on and like Trenton was telling all the kids, he had like 12 holes in his socks. He burned holes in his socks. Not a good idea, not a good idea. We as people, we can't play with fire. Fire is very dangerous, but God made a bush. Be on fire, but not burn. And then he started talking to Moses from the bush. He said, take off your shoes. You're on holy ground. And Moses was like, oh, okay. Because, you know, he had started to get closer. And what is that? Why is, is that bush on fire? What? And then God starts to talk to him and he tells him, Moses, I want you to go back to Egypt. Oh, no, that's not going to work because there's people who want to kill me there. And he says, no, I want you to go and deliver the Hebrews away from Egypt. It is time for them to get out of there. I've seen what they've been going through. Their suffering has been long enough. We're done with that. And Moses is like, yeah, but they're not going to listen to me. That, that Nobody's going to believe me, especially not the Pharaoh. You want me to go to the Pharaoh? And, and God says, I'll tell you what, Moses, I want you to get your staff, throw it on the ground. So he throws it on the ground and it becomes a snake. And then God says, now pick it back up. And Moses is probably like, you want me to pick up a snake? Pick it up. So he picks it up and it becomes a staff again. Then he says, put your hand inside your jacket or your coat. And when Moses pulls it out, it's got leprosy. It's like a diseased hand. And he's like, put it back in your coat. And he puts it back in and then, oh, it's all better. And he also says, take some of the water from the Nile River, pour it on the ground. It's going to become blood. And they're going to see, oh, wow, he... Okay, he must be from God. And, and he's like, yeah, but still, I, I don't know if they're going to believe me. And God says, look, just tell them that I am sent you. I am. That's the same God he was telling Abraham who, who he was. I am. Like, I am the God, okay? So that's a very important name. So Moses is like, okay, but one more problem, God. Uh, I, 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 I can't talk very good because I just st st stutter and God was like oh, Moses who made your mouth who made his mouth God right he's like God I made your mouth and Moses was like I can't I can't I can't, can't do it and God's like okay fine I'll let your brother Aaron go with you and you do the signs and Aaron can do the talking okay but God was mad about that because he he could have controlled Moses' mouth, or he may have used the stuttering as a way to show people that this is who God uses, okay? Now, Moses is going to listen to God, and next week we're going to find out how he goes back and talks to the Pharaoh. Now, what do we have to learn for today? Okay, first of all, we want to learn about Jesus, okay? Moses came to deliver Okay, so Moses was supposed to deliver the people from slavery or bondage, okay? They have been slaves for like 400 years, okay? They're ready to not be slaves anymore. God sent Jesus to slave us from the bondage of our sin, okay? So Moses was supposed to save the people, the Hebrew people, from bondage and Jesus was supposed to save us from our sin okay so this is a picture okay another thing that we see is that God worked out so many details for Moses like the fact that he was given just the right mom and dad who knew how to protect him and how to hide him and how to save him uh, from being killed he was given the right to be adopted 
Like the fact that the princess was there at just the right time to save him from that rushing water. Like God worked out all the details. Now, why does that matter to us? Well, here's the deal. God had a purpose for Moses, okay? God has a purpose for you too. Maybe you have really long fingers and you're like, I don't know why God, my fingers are so long. I don't know why God made me with long legs. I don't know why, you know, I'm good with animals. I don't know why. Maybe God wants you to be a pianist and play the piano and write beautiful music to help people love God more. Maybe God wants you to help animals. Maybe God wants you to go be a missionary or a pastor or a teacher. And he's given you the right people, the right town, the right everything to set you up to fulfill his purpose in your life. Just like he worked out all the details for Moses. So you can know that God is working out the details for you too. Okay? So what do we take away from today? God wants to be your deliverer. Okay? God wants to rescue you from your sin. He doesn't want you to be in bondage to your sin. He wants you to ask Jesus in your heart and let him be your savior. God has a purpose for you, okay? And he's working out all the details, just like he did with Moses. So you can trust that God has a purpose for you. Now, let me uh, pray with you, and then I'll show you a craft that you can do at home, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you so much that you love us. God, I pray that you would keep the boys and girls that are at home safe, um, help their moms and dads to have wisdom, to know when to go and where to go and, and how to keep them healthy and strong. Thank you, God, that they're, they're growing and doing well. Help them to keep doing well at school and get smarter because, God, you do have a purpose for them. And we thank you, God, for all that you're doing uh, for them to keep them safe. Thank you for Moses, God. Thank you that he was saved and rescued and that he went back to help uh, bring the people out of slavery. And God, thank you for Jesus that he came to come into our heart and he died on the cross so that we could be forgiven of our sin. Thank you, God, that you're working out all the details in our life, that you put us in just the right family with just the right town and just the right school. Um, and God, you have a big purpose for us. And help us to do what we're supposed to do um, for you, God. Thank you for all you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so if, you're, um, if you've got some construction paper, then you can use some manila paper and some brown paper. Or maybe you have yellow paper it would work. But what I did is I just ripped some strips of this paper. And you're going to make a basket, okay? Now, I'm going to show you... A basket that Trenton made earlier because he left his up here and he cut his with a uh, scallop scissor so it looks a little different than just tearing it but then he drew baby Moses right there in the basket you can do yours however you want okay it could be a little basket that's just on part of your paper it could be a big basket like Trenton's was um, just any way you want to make a basket. If you want to do little pieces, okay, you can do that. If you've got different colors, you can even do strips and weave them in and out, kind of like what they really did to make a basket. Um, but that's a craft that you can do at home. Guys, I hope that you are being safe and healthy, and I hope you're having fun. Uh, today was a beautiful day. Uh, to go outside and play a little bit and get some sun. And I hope that you had a great Christmas and a happy, happy new year. And I hope this is a great year for you. I hope you grow uh, strong. I hope you grow uh, in your mind. I hope you grow spiritually and get closer to Jesus. I hope it's a good year for you. I love you guys and I miss you. Hope to see you soon.